Greetings, dear brothers and sisters. We appreciate your presence as we share Christian messages with you. Recently, Archbishop Vigano, a revered spiritual figure, delivered a significant and urgent message from Jesus to humanity concerning the approaching month of October. Jesus foretold his withdrawal from the masses. How will the abomination of desolation penetrate the temples? What will transpire when it takes hold of the masses, and when is this expected to happen? The end times are approaching with a powerful trigger. As Jesus indicated, the emergence of the abomination of desolation in the world and within the temple will likely initiate the most intense phase of the Great Tribulation, along with a warning or illumination of conscience. This will mark a time when Jesus will be absent from the temples. What does this mean for us? In this discussion, we will explore how the abomination of desolation mentioned by Jesus in the Bible may unfold, the implications it holds for the faithful, the timeline of these events, and ways we can safeguard ourselves from this situation that God has aligned to purify both the world and the church. Jesus referred to a mysterious abomination of desolation as a significant indicator of the end times. He stated, When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, set up in the holy place, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. He outlines various actions that should be taken, emphasizing that there will be a period of great tribulation, unlike anything the world has ever witnessed or will ever witness again. Rather than defining what the abomination of desolation entails, Jesus points to the book of the prophet Daniel, underscoring its significance and the appropriate response. In Daniel 9 verses 24-27, the prophecy speaks of the coming of the Messiah, His death, the destruction of Jerusalem, and the establishment of God's kingdom. This passage, which includes the prophecy of the seventy weeks, has been interpreted in various ways, and we will refrain from debating the timeline of the final week. The key takeaway is that Daniel foretells a future ruler, identified as the Antichrist, who will establish a treaty for one week, translating to seven years. Halfway through this period, he will break the covenant, halt sacrifices and offerings, and set up the abomination of desolation in the temple. The desecration of the temple will persist until God's judgment ultimately falls upon him and his followers, approximately 1,290 days later, or three and a half years. How should we interpret the abomination of desolation in light of the insights from Jesus and Daniel? An abomination of desolation represents something deeply repulsive, something so detestable that it leads an individual into a state of utter emptiness or destruction. The greatest source of disgust that could leave the faithful in a state of desolation is the phenomenon of individuals idolizing themselves while falsely believing they are worshipping God in an acceptable manner. This concept carries both personal and external dimensions. St. Paul notes that through a distorted doctrine, instead of becoming temples of the Holy Spirit, we may become vessels of evil, which not only opposes God but also seeks to usurp His authority and alter His teachings. This represents individual apostasy, which, as more individuals succumb to it, transitions into a collective reality. The abomination of desolation also manifests in an objective manner beyond the individual, encompassing practical, institutional, and ecclesiastical aspects. This occurs when the supreme sacrament instituted by Jesus is distorted to the point that it effectively drives the Lord from the temple, compelling the faithful to accept such a perversion. This scenario may unfold if the church hierarchy decides to alter the prayers of consecration for the Eucharist and the Holy Massachusetts. Such an institutional change would have grave consequences, as it signifies the removal of Jesus from the Mass itself. It would mean that the bread and wine would no longer transform into the true presence of our Lord Jesus Christ because the priests would cease using the authentic words spoken by Jesus at the Last Supper, essential for the miracle of transubstantiation to occur on the altars. Consequently, the Mass would become invalid, as the essential transubstantiation performed by the priest would no longer take place, leading the faithful to be misled into believing that it still occurs. This concerning development has allegedly been foretold through various apparitions and messages from Jesus and Mary. Therefore, it is vital for us to clarify which words currently affect transubstantiation and which must be upheld. The priest, 
holding the host, pronounces the words of consecration in persona Christi, who, on the eve of his passion, took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and raising his eyes to heaven towards you, God his Almighty Father, giving thanks, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body that will be given for you. Following this, the celebrant takes the chalice filled with wine and declares, In the same way, after dinner, he took this glorious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and giving thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. If this consecration formula is altered, it will constitute a genuine desecration of the temple. Instead of the Mass serving as the highest act of adoration to God through the Eucharist, it would devolve into an act of profound distortion, driven by the self-absorption of the priest. He would utter his own words of consecration rather than those of Jesus, leading to a situation where he believes he is enacting the sacrament, even as the true presence of Christ is absent. The faithful, including those who have turned away from true belief, would also share in this misconception. The personal abomination of desolation, individual apostasy, is already happening at the level of the faithful and the Vatican hierarchy, and it is increasing. When the profanation of the Mass occurs due to the falsification of the words of consecration, the Lord will feel dishonored like never before and will send the warning or illumination of conscience. There are messages that say that the apostate hierarchy will force priests to accept new consecration prayers based on ecumenism with Protestants, and the priests who resist will be automatically cancelled or excommunicated. If this happens, there will no longer be faithful priests serving the Lord, and great persecution of faithful Catholics will break out. There are several precautions that have been suggested in various appearances. First, Maria Giulia Yanni was given the cross of forgiveness for when there is a lack of holy priests for sacramental confession. Second, while the Catholic Church will be the most persecuted, if the Orthodox Church is still standing, you can attend its services because today both churches mutually recognize the validity of the sacraments administered by the other. Third, when persecution intensifies, appearances of Jesus Christ have ensured that there will be priests in hiding administering the Eucharist, especially in shelters. In all honesty, the exact details of how this entire process will unfold remain uncertain. Given the complexity of the situation, we strongly encourage you to take this information into consideration while remaining vigilant and discerning. However, it is equally important to avoid becoming overly fixated on any particular format or interpretation, as the abomination of desolation may present itself in various forms that we cannot yet fully comprehend. Therefore, maintaining a balanced perspective is essential. Moreover, it is wise to engage in prayer for our spiritual leaders, our cardinals, bishops, and priests asking that they remain steadfast in their commitment to God and the teachings of the Church. In times of uncertainty and potential turmoil, we must also hold on to hope. Should the most challenging scenarios come to pass, we should pray for the safety and courage of our priests, especially if they find themselves in a position where they must defy the directives associated with the abomination of desolation. In our hearts, we turn to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and beseech her intercession, Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Amen. As we conclude this message, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to you, dear brothers and sisters, for watching until the end of our video. Let us move forward without fear, embracing a deeper faith than we have ever known. Together, let us continue to walk in faith and remain blessed in the knowledge that God is with us. We urge you to keep praying for His divine graces and blessings to be revealed in our lives. May God bless us all and protect us in our journey. Amen.